Hello and welcome to this episode of Copenhagen Fashion Week Live Q&A. Um, I'm Liam Freeman, I'm the Senior Features Editor of the Vogue Global Network and today I'm joined by Frida Bard of the Swedish brand Hope. Hello Frida. Hi. Hi, how are you today? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Good. Yes, very well, thank you. Um, so I'd love to hear um, how you've been staying creative over the past few months. We've all had to find different ways of working and you've been able to work and interact with your team as you would usually be able to do in, in, in your studio. So how, what's been keeping you motivated and creative over the past few months? Mm. Yeah, it's surely been uh, a very challenging time. And even if Sweden hasn't been in complete lockdown, most of mm. us has uh, worked from home since the beginning of March. And I think when you, uh, when you get this uh, long time uh, that allows for reflection and uh, plus you, uh, you're facing your own vulnerability and companies, I think mm -hmm. you start automatically to rethink and to, to revalue what is truly important. And uh, for Hope, uh, Hope is a company where style is prior to gender. So, uh, so everything we do is to, to push for uh, diversity and self-expression. So it's been very important for us uh, to, uh, to use this moment to bring light to other voices and to, uh, to help push for social and political change. And um, we, are, we are always committed to help tell the stories that needs to be told and uh, by the people who deserves to be listened to. So uh, during this time, we have focused our energy to make sure we, uh, we highlight uh, other voices and give them a platform to speak from, uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to give space basically, and to, to learn from other creatives and from, from uh, change makers to raise awareness and to inspire our community to make the same. Great, because you have your own talk series as, as well, is that, that's correct. Sorry, can you repeat that again? You, you, and one of the ways you do that, I guess, is through your own talk series. You yes, series it's through the, talks. Yes, yeah. it's through talk series and uh, campaigns and uh, portraits and interviews and uh, all sorts of way we can we can find. Okay. And here we are at the spring summer twenty one season already. It doesn't seem possible, but um, I'd love to hear what you have in store for us this season in terms of the collection. Um, how you'll be communicating that um, and any challenges you faced along the way while creating this collection. Well, the, the Spring Summer 21 uh, celebrates the kind of like unconventional, uh, kind of distorted, imperfect uh, things about the summer and life that we try often, oftentimes try to evade. Uh, I mean, the summer is hot, it's greasy, it's uh, not always perfect and romantic. So that's what we try to uh, infuse a little bit in our collections. Uh, but what I, what I sense also uh, since since the pandemic started is that it has speeded up the change and a change that many of fashion business has been working for during quite some long time now. Uh, and in late December last year, uh, we took the decision at Hope to create a new label called Work uh, that embodies our uh, desire to create an honest and direct fashion based on our heritage of tailoring and workwear. So uh, this is a seasonless collection uh, with a timeless, timeless approach, timeless wardrobe thinking. And uh, in a way, it's our approach to, uh, to the trend driven and uh, quite fast paced world of fashion. And mm -hmm. uh, this, this clarification of concepts also made it uh, ma makes it more important, uh, more, uh, sorry, uh, it makes it uh, easier for us to focus on the main collection and just make sure that uh, our uh, ex creative expression can uh, flow even more freely. 
Fantastic. I think that kind of feeds perfectly into my last question, actually. Um, of course, we're all here for Copenhagen Fashion Week this week, and Copenhagen Fashion Week has really made strides on the sustainability front and has set out 17 um, minimum sustainability standards that should be achieved by all designers that present their collections during Copenhagen Fashion Week by 2023. I'd love to hear what um, what hope has and how is, what measures hope has taken to, to reduce their impact on their, their environment. I mean, right now there are uh, many, many uh, problems that needs to be addressed. Diversity, equality and the environment, to name a few. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it might be time for fashion to uh, to slow down a bit, to work out the best way to move forward. And for Hope, mm -hmm. uh, this, this first step is to um, slim down the assortment, uh, to make uh, less, less collections a year. So we're going from four collections to two collections a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will have two, um, two main collection but that is uh, smaller, tighter, and uh, more, hopefully, more on point, that runs alongside uh, our long-term long initiative uh, work. Um, mm -hmm. Then we have also uh, created a concept we're calling uh, Reclaim, which, uh, where we uh, are reselling pre-loved garments, uh, pre-loved hope garments uh, to, new, uh, to new owners. Uh, we, of course, we're working with more sustainable qualities and materials, always seeking a process which is uh, less harmful for the environment and for the people working with it, like dyeing process, for instance. Uh, but I think that uh, the overproduction is a huge problem. So uh, for me as a designer, uh, I think it's even more important now to be uh, to making sharp decisions early in the process to avoid cutouts and uh, overproduction, basically. Wonderful. Thank you, Frida. I wish we continue, could continue talking, but it looks like our five minutes is already up. Um, so it's yeah. been so nice talking to you, and, and thank you to all of you who joined today's um, Copenhagen Fashion Week live Q&A. Thank you very much. Thanks.